Microsoft is talking next-gen Xbox, team hits a new milestone, and earnings have come out. Happy May, everybody. Uh, somehow we all made it through the month of April. Hopefully everybody's happy, healthy, and everything else is going on. Microsoft has given us a lot to talk about this week. Other companies are also putting out a lot of news. It is starting to kick up into that spring uh, heavy news cycle, and here we are, and I am all about it, considering what we've been going through the past several weeks. Microsoft is clearly on the hype train for the new uh, generation Xbox. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's just dive in. Microsoft released earnings this week. Across the board, extremely healthy for the company. A couple things I do want to just point out uh, very quickly, they did point out that they do now have 75 million Teams users. That is quite a bit. That's almost 30 million more than what they talked about last time. But what I want to point out here is that they also have 258 uh, Office 365 commercial seats. What this, this means is that the company can effectively add another 180 million people to Teams without ever selling an additional Office 365 license. While I know it's not a perfect one-to-one -one of commercial seats versus potential Teams users, uh, you can kind of see the math there that there's still a lot of growth ahead. Now, keep in mind that a Teams sale or a new Teams user doesn't necessarily mean that Microsoft is making more money. That means they already had an Office 365 subscription and they are now using Teams. So just kind of keep that in mind. Also, the other big thing that is close to my heart, Surface Revenue was relatively flat at 1.1 or $1.3 billion, I should say. It's roughly flat year over year. A bit surprising. I honestly thought it might be up a little bit given what is going on and people rushing out to buy devices, but there were also supply strain, uh, supply chain issues. And we also know that Microsoft is getting ready to launch some new hardware as well. We've seen new headphones pass through the FCC. Uh, we've seen Surface earbuds, uh, the instruction manuals leak. We've seen benchmarks from a Surface uh, Book 3, a Surface Potential Go 2. So there's a lot of Surface stuff right around the corner and we should hopefully be hearing more about that in the near future. Also on the Xbox side, Microsoft said that on the content and services revenue, it was up 2%, but there were some other numbers as well that pointed more downwards, such as hardware sales were off quite a bit. Not a big surprise there. Uh, Apple also posted good results selling quite a few iPhones, although they are starting, I believe they actually retracted guidance for the next quarter ahead because of all the craziness that is going on. That is not completely unusual in times like this. And other companies have done the same saying, hey, we don't really know what's going to happen. So it's hard for us to project revenue uh, for the quarter ahead. Google honestly wasn't bad either, although they were starting to see a decline in advertising revenue, which again, not that big surprise. So overall, a uh, pretty good tech quarter with with one little exception, Amazon actually posted not terrible results, but what they said was that they were going to take all their basic net income, uh, which was around $4 billion, and they were going to allocate that for uh, overhead for dealing with the issues in the environment right now. So just kind of keep all that in mind. If you're looking for information about Microsoft's build, they finally are starting to talk about it. It's going to be all digital. It's going to be more developer-y, and they're going to be talking less about news-related items. And so uh, Microsoft was going to be streaming all of this stuff. This is a first kind of look at how they are going to reconfigure their build or their developer conference. So they're making these big changes. You can go sign up. It's free, like I said, and you'll be able to stream all that stuff. And so if that is of interest to you, there you go. Uh, other things that made big kind of waves the past couple weeks, but need to be clarified, uh, Zoom got caught in a lie. So they said that they had 300 million daily active users and then very quietly went back and edited their post and said, we actually have 300 million participants. Now, the reason why that's a big deal is there's a big difference between 300, mail, 300 million daily active users and 300 million participants. If you go to a meeting five times in a day on Zoom, that is, that is five participations. If you go to a Zoom meeting as a, as a human, that's a daily active user, right? So the difference here is that Zoom didn't have 300 million different people using the product. They had 300 million participants, meaning that they had many, many, many less than 300 million daily active users. And so it's a slight detail change, but it actually has pretty significant uh, ramifications. On that side, Microsoft actually said on the team side, they had 200 million daily participants. So while Zoom is clearly ahead of where Microsoft is with Teams, keep in mind that Teams customers are more than likely paying. Zoom customers are more than likely free with one person in the room actually paying for the service. That being said, we're all better off when Zoom and Teams are both huge because Microsoft is now scrambling to push out Teams features faster to catch up to some of the stuff that Zoom has already implemented. That's always a good thing. Always a good thing for the end user. Now, on to the gaming news. There was a lot, a lot of sort of next-gen stuff. So we're going to kick it off here. Uh, but 
before we go to the future, I want to talk about the past for a second. Do you remember like four to six weeks ago, there were all these rumors out that, that Sony already had their dev kits out to all their third party developers and that Microsoft was way behind and that there was a lot of concern and maybe somewhat justified that Microsoft wasn't going to have third party titles coming with the launch of the Xbox Series X. There was, a, you can go back and look, like there was a ton of rumors and a lot of people like just whatever, doing the Twitters, you know how that goes. Uh, well, here's the good news. Microsoft has come out and said, hey, you know what? Screw that. We are going to have a day dedicated to third-party titles that will be coming to the Xbox Series X, and we're going to do it next week. And so that's what they're doing. Next week, Microsoft is going to hold an inside Xbox event, a little bit timing different. Usually it's like late in the day. This one's much earlier in the day, where they are only going to be showing off third-party titles that will be coming to the Xbox Series X. That is that is really good news. Now, if you're wondering about first-party titles, Microsoft is more than likely going to be doing that in June. They already started hinting at that, hey, we're, we're going to have a June event. We already kind of knew that. Uh, but they're saving all their first-party titles for June, which is which is good. So now we're going to get a look at what third parties are building for the platform. And then a month later, we're going to get a, a look at all of the first party titles from all of the many different game studios that uh, Microsoft has acquired over the past couple of years. It's going to be a good time. I really do think it's going to be a good time. So a uh, couple other things. Aaron Greenberg also said related to this on Twitter. He said, we've got a lot to share this summer and heading into the holiday season. So we'll give more details on that next week too. What I digest from that is that they're going to lay out their battle plan. I hope I don't have fully full optics into how they're going to do this, but I'm hoping that they're going to lay out and say like, look, these are the timelines that we are working with. This is how we're going to announce stuff. This is when we're going to announce stuff. That way there's good solid expectations for when a Microsoft event is going to happen, how pre-orders and everything are going to go and all of that good stuff and when their expected release date is. I'm hoping that based on that, that one statement, mind you, and that came from Twitter is that Microsoft is actually going to clarify how they are going to move forward here with the launch of the Xbox Series X. It's just something to bite on and something to speculate a little bit about. Uh, Phil Spencer is also making the media rounds once again. He is headed to, well, he went to CNBC and he said, hey, look, we know what's going on in the world and it is not very, in very clear language. It is not going to change the impact of when we are going to launch the Xbox Series X. It is still coming this holiday season with the caveat of he can't make that same statement for launch titles. Obviously, what is going on in the world is making it very hard to develop games uh, remotely, especially when you need a lot of collaboration on just making design decisions and actually game and mechanic implementation. But then you also need the raw overhead horsepower to compile the code and get things into a playable state. And then not only that, you need to get feedback from developers and, and beta testers and the like. And so, um, According to Phil, Xbox console still on the path to release at the time that it is expected. Um, I actually believe it is already into the manufacturing phase, but game development can't make that same statement for every single game that Microsoft is working on first party or third party. So just keep that in mind. Also, 10 million Game Pass subscribers were announced this week. That's actually a pretty substantial number and actually is a very healthy thing for the Xbox user base, uh, especially for the longevity of the brand. One other minor thing to point out, there's new class action lawsuit for the Elite Series 2. The stick drift is becoming an issue. Now, I want to point out that Microsoft is not the first company to actually have this happen to them. Nintendo also, with their Joy-Cons, um, had the same issue with stick drift and there was a class action lawsuit. We don't quite know what's going to come out of this and I don't know how big it will get or what Microsoft plans to do, but clearly there is a frustrated user base with the Elite Series 2 and stick drift and Microsoft hasn't been you know, satisfying the needs of those users, if you will. So let's jump into the questions of the week. I always tweet this out. My Twitter handle is at BDSams. And then uh, that way you can drop questions there. It makes it easier. So an old Amiga user says, I like the form factor of the Surface Go and your recent review of the Pro X made it sound interesting as a travel device if we can ever travel again. Problem is that both of them are compromised in one way or another. Do you think that Windows 10 X will usher in a more portable form factors? I don't, I don't think so. I. My problem in what he's alluding to is so you can scroll back on the channel um, and then there's a Pro X uh, follow-up review six months later. And so the pro one, one of the challenges is that Windows 10 is not a touch-first OS. And what he's getting at here is will Windows 10X make it more touch-friendly? I don't, without having deep dived into Windows 10X, I know vaguely what the interface looks like, right? I've used the emulator, but I haven't used it in a touch-first scenario. Um, it's hard to say. And I... I, I lean towards the fact that no, it's probably not going to leave, lean more towards uh, portable 
uh, engagement as he's hinting at. Matt Dynas says, do we know anything about the software architecture that the new Xbox will use? We know about the, the directive uh, we know about DirectX 12 Ultimate, really Microsoft, but have you heard anything? Do you think they will talk about? So there's a couple things to keep in mind. There's a lot of arc. When you use the term architecture, there's a lot of things. First off, Microsoft has a thing literally called Xbox Velocity Architecture, which talks about how data moves across the board and between storage and the CPU. So we have that. We also have the DirectX 12 GPU uh, or DirectX 12U uh, qualified GPU. So DX12U is going to be our best look at the underlying technology that is going to help drive the technology or the, the frames for the next generation of console. Unfortunately and unfortunately, game developer conference did happen, but didn't happen probably in the way that Microsoft was hoping. And so that is the type of scenario in place where we're going to learn the most about the underlying stuff. Now, GDC does have, I believe, a summer event, and maybe we will learn more about the deep dive and nitty gritty. But that being said, all the developers who are kind of clued into what is going on with the next generation Xbox already know this stuff because they're already building games. And we're going to see some next week and we're going to see some uh, in June as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, KJ PDA says, trying to decide on what Surface device to place a Surface 3 with. Price tag is about $650. Suggestions, recommendation. Surface Go with two, Surface Go 2 LTE, a latest Surface Core i3 or Core M3 or Surface Go 2 Core M3. Good question. So I would wait like, a week or two and then we'll we'll revisit this because we'll have I hope I believe much better look at what service go to is and is not uh, capable of so uh, David Allen says hi Brad we've all been challenged in some way by the pandemic that is going on however I think it has helped companies highlight remote challenges office 365 zoom G suite and all that I enjoy seeing what technology can do while in the while in-face meetings are important, I really like the integration of Office 365 products in general and across devices. G Suite is missing that, in my opinion. Uh, with the new branding and push to Microsoft 365, what do you see Microsoft doing next? I feel like that signal that, uh, that the integration among products and services are going to become more tightly integrated. I don't think this is new branding. It's just a fresh coat of paint. So his question is, Microsoft is doing a lot. One of the primary benefits of Office 365, Microsoft 365, is the integration across applications, platforms, and services. That is probably the biggest benefit uh, in the whole ecosystem. And so other companies lack some of that. And so what do I think Microsoft is going to do next? I think they're going to build upon that. I also think the next big sort of push for Microsoft, if you will, is going to be bringing in uh, more web content and integrations. Um, it's kind of hard to contextualize that. But think of things like Microsoft has talked about some of their, I think it was called the, not the fluid, was it the fluid framework? But there's an office framework where you can actually build stuff on the web and copy and paste it and, and bring it uh, like Excel data, like from a website to your Excel document from or from an Excel document and paste it into an interactive document. I think we like office components uh, are going to be broken out and features are going to be pulled out of specific products and then being able to be embedded into other products and especially the web. I think that is going to be sort of where we see the Microsoft productivity suite head in the near future. Maybe we'll see some at build if we are lucky. Uh, Sydney 2K says, hey, Brad, I uh, hope your family are doing well. They are. Thank you. Hopefully you are doing well, uh, too. Uh, given this week, the, the flight simulator, given that this week, the team at Flight Simulator 2020 have released the minimum and recommended ideal system specs for PC to play the game. What does the Series X fall within those bounds? So, oh, good question. So, uh, Flight Simulator 2020, creeping along closer to release date, which I you should be excited about. Um, if you've enjoyed the Flight Series, you should definitely be excited about. Uh, I believe that based on what I know so far, that the Series X is on the higher end. It's not the highest possible end. Um, the reason why I say that is there's some other limitations potentially, but I believe the Series X should be able to handle Flight Sim 2020 pretty well when it comes out. Uh, right Guy says, whatever happened to the future vision videos? I always love this. Yeah, so Microsoft used to do these videos where they would say, hey, look, this is how we envision Xbox specifically, because I remember what they did one. I think it was Xbox, or maybe it was Home Entertainment, where they actually kind of showed off like HoloLens Connect and a whole bunch of other things like many, many years prior to it being released i think it's just sort of been the changing of the guard at microsoft they don't the same people who are responsible for not creating those but necessarily like promoting those have moved on and if you look at how microsoft actually built products based on that maybe it's not a strategic advantage anymore for them to release them so uh indistinguishable says hi brad in your book beneath a surface uh well done by the way thank you uh you mentioned that the service team had 
uh, had a plan for launching a standalone Surface monitor this year. Uh, is it possible that we'll see that plan come to fruition? A standalone monitor might be the perfect thing to launch alongside a new Surface dock. So if there's definitely not a Surface monitor coming in the spring event, possibly in the fall. One of the things that is a challenge about one, when I wrote that book, the book will be three years old. Jeez. Uh, I think when, yeah, when it will be two years old, I think two years old uh, when uh, this fall anyway. So yeah, it will be two years old in the fall. Um, is that a lot of that plan, those plans change. I know that they have a Surface Monitor. One of the challenges is that they're originally making the Surface uh, Studio use the same mechanics that were going to be inside the Surface Hub 2X, which has now effectively been canceled. And so I don't know what that means to sort of that modular component that they were building for the Surface Hub 2X coming to the Surface Studio. I don't know what's happening there. I'm not expecting a Surface Studio refresh here uh, in the spring. So I think I'm I'm hoping that in the fall we might see the monitor, but I haven't heard good insight about when that monitor is actually going to be released. So uh, it's a beautiful monitor, and I hope that they do. Uh, Side Choker says, Brad, I hope you're doing well, and thank you for the best thing about your week or your podcast. You guys are awfully humble this week. I'm loving it. Been loving you guys. Thank you. Uh, so I have a few. Oh, he's got quite a few questions, which is okay. Do you know the aspect? Uh, the aspect ratio of the Duo when it is used with one or two screens? No, I. I want to say 16 by 9, but don't quote me on that because I don't actually have one, so I can't tell you if it actually is 16 by 9. Uh, do you think that Microsoft should make a Microsoft 365 creator package that includes Office 365 and a, a Final Cut competitor from Microsoft to convince Apple users to go over to Windows? I you know um, what they should do is potentially create a Microsoft 365 creator package if they're going to go down that road and use something like DaVinci. Uh, DaVinci is actually a really good video editor already on Windows that is not Adobe. And I think it's actually free. Um, so keep that in mind. If you need a good video editor, go look at for at DaVinci. Um, it's got really good creating, creating color grading capabilities. So, uh, would it be possible for Microsoft to make Windows 10 open source? And why does Microsoft not just make an open source Windows? Because there are too many patented technologies underneath that they don't want an open source Windows competitor. Could they do it? Yes. But there's also a lot of security implications of open sourcing some of their stuff. Yes, you can make the argument that, that hey, like people will just fix it and it'll be great. And it'll make things better. You're not wrong, but Microsoft still makes a boatload of money and they don't even want to think about jeopardizing uh, windows not to mention some of it is really really old stuff and hasn't been looked at with a fine tooth comb and they may not they honestly just may not want it out there they could, they could look at it and say look this is kind of sloppy we don't want this to represent us um and so there you go uh, and when do you think we will see cloud-based windows and a windows that syncs everything from settings that are going to be up in the cloud so this is a crazy one that drives me nuts is that settings are not synced very well across complete devices now perfect example here the mail app in windows 10 i use the mail app that is my primary email application and it does not sync between this device and my desktop and my podcast box it, they don't sync the settings don't sync and it drives me nuts they had it uh at some point with windows 8 and i yeah it's just frustrating chris Kaz says any update on when microsoft is going to finally offer multi-window user instant support for office on the ipad os yes um actually paul helped me out with this one because he reminded me of it uh it's going to be it's already in the insider program i believe for these applications so it should be coming sooner rather than later for ios users um and if you're chris if you're able to get into that program that should allow that functionality here very very soon uh, his second question is any idea if microsoft will bring something like trello or kanban style functionality to consumer versions of office 365 planners is enterprise app and totally overkill so i could see this being a part of or an evolution of to do so keep in mind that to do to do is microsoft's free uh task list application that basically was wonderlist and then they rebuilt it and called it to do and then they killed wonderlist so i could see it becoming a part of to do uh as an evolution but i haven't heard anything specifically on that uh, the Joe Finn says, now that Windows 10X plans have shifted to a uh, a new world, or uh, shifted to a single view or a single style device, any word on a public preview? I had heard that there was going to be potentially one uh, as early as this month, but I can't, it, it's hard to lock that stuff down because they could change plans at any time. Uh, but don't be surprised if we do see one sooner, hopefully rather than later. Mr. PKI says, do you think Halo Infinite is going to be launched and available with the Xbox Series X or has it been postponed to 2021? Good question. So Phil Spencer didn't explicitly say that uh, 
the next gen halo has been delayed or postponed but that is the rumors flying around at this point is that with the onset of everybody working from home that the halo has been delayed he did say again i think it's worth revis revisiting his interview yesterday in cnbc the hardware will launch this fall or holiday season he can't make the same comment about games and the reason why i think he's saying that is he already knows in the back of his head that some games or titles are going to end up slipping and so halo would not be surprising I think it'd be a major bummer to not launch without Halo, but here we are. Uh, and then Herectic says, would you recommend the Surface earbuds for sporting activities, running, or exercise? So here's the deal. I haven't used the earbuds long enough to give a good solid opinion either way. The good news is you got a lot of choices. So Surface earbuds should be coming out here in the next week or two. Uh, you've got the Apple AirPods Pro. Google just announced some things. There's Samsung Buds. There's also some Bose version. The thing is you got a lot of options and the, what's going to be important is to do your research. There's also some uh, Beats from Apple, which honestly might be the best thing if you're looking for like hardcore um like sporting activities the only reason i point that out is that microsoft is making a pitch that the surface buds or earbuds are great for productivity productivity usually isn't done on a treadmill so there you go that wraps it up for this week's guys uh thanks to everybody tuning in hopefully happy i, I can't even sign off correctly it's been a mumbo jumbo morning but hopefully your may will go better than my podcast and have yourselves a wonderful day